Today we are going to strip down, rebuild, and upgrade this Polaris Razor front differential. And we're going to fill it full of Wicked Sandcraft RCR heavy duty components and we're gonna bulletproof this diff. That definitely does not sound right. So stay tuned for the video. Hope you find it informative and enjoyable. Hey guys, today I'm going to be tearing apart the front diff out of this 2017 Razor Turbo. And we're gonna slap in some nice Sandcraft RCR heavy duty internals, we're going to do the seals, the bearings, and we're also going to replace the OEM spray carrier with a heavy duty billet aluminum spray carrier. So here's the heavy duty spray carrier as well as the 12 tooth heavy duty armature plate. So that should make this front diff a lot stronger. Here's the front diff out of the machine. It's a little bit of a pain to get it out, but it's not too bad. More or less, you just got to take apart a lot of stuff. Uh, it's not very difficult things you need to remove. I had to remove my winch and my winch plate. That was the worst part. And then basically you're gonna have to take apart a bunch of the front end. You're gonna have to take off the, or um, remove the lower ball joint, remove the hub assembly with the rotor, uh, take the caliper off, remove the tie rod. You can leave the upper ball joint connected in all the A-arms and then you're gonna obviously pull the front axles out of the diff. That'll give you access to getting to everything, removing the winch plate and the winch mount, or uh, the winch plate and the winch will allow you to lift that diff up enough so that you can like kind of wiggle it out. It's really tight in there. If you don't have a winch, or if your winch is mounted on the front of the bumper or something, it'll be a lot easier. And then there's just four 15 mil head bolts holding these diffs in. It's really easy. Once you get the front diff out, give it a good rub down, clean it off. Um, I scraped it with a wire brush a little bit and then just sprayed it with some brake clean to get most of the gunk off because we'll be taking this front plate off of this diff. That's how we're gonna be getting into where we need to, uh, to be to get to all the internal components. I'm going to give you some advice right away. When you're putting this diff back in, do not over torque those bolts going into these cast aluminum threaded holes. You can easily damage them. You're taking a hardened bolt and you're threading it into cast aluminum. Do not over torque it. So now we've got the diff positioned here, secured with some rags so it doesn't wobble around. Take an impact driver or ratchet and just remove all seven of these 10 mil head bolts. Um, depending on the application, this might look slightly different. The internal should be pretty much the same on most of them. So um, just make sure you get all these guys out. Make sure you're not contaminating the inside with any debris, try and keep it as clean as you can. Also pay special attention to the wires going in here so you don't damage them when you're moving around the diff or cleaning it. I've got a little crack, a break in the wire loom or the the coating on my red wire there it's cracked so what i'm going to do is before i put it back in the machine i'm going to address that by putting a bunch of liquid electrical tape on there just to prevent any future issues or corrosion on that wire or it breaking anymore so to get the cover off sometimes you have to just put your screwdriver under here and just pry it up a little be careful not to damage anything here it should come off pretty easy I'm not sure what to expect inside here I have not been into this diff 4,000 miles on this diff and uh, we'll see what we got nice so right away I'm seeing that there's no water contamination if you have any kind of milky fluid in there like milk and coffee um, then you know you've had water in the diff Mine looks nice. You see the armature plate there. There's no missing teeth. You'll notice there's six teeth on the armature plate. 
I'm going to be upgrading the armature plate with a 12 tooth design from Sandcraft RCR, which gives more contact points, which makes it stronger. You'll also notice there's not all these cutouts as there is on the other one. This is a stronger plate. So the main reason I'm digging into this diff is the fact that it's been making a lot of noise. And the reason it's making those noises is probably these bearings. Actually, that one sounds pretty good. Might be the out. Can you hear that? Oh yeah, that's the output bearing. So I didn't drain the fluid out of this diff before I did this. Since the diff is laying on the back like this, all the fluid's gonna pool back there. There's only about 200 mils of fluid in this diff anyways. It just uses like a splash lubrication system. You can kind of see it splashing out there when it turns. Um, so I'm just gonna pull this baby apart now. Making sure nothing's broken. That looks good. Generally speaking, this diff probably only needs bearings and seals because the output seal was starting to leak a little bit. And um, like I said, the bearings were definitely noisy. So I'm just gonna, you can take this spring out now too. Whoop, see that? What flew out of there was the factory roll pin. I'll be replacing this factory roll pin with a Sandcraft RCR. 300M roll pin. This OEM roll pin isn't hollow like on a lot of the appli other applications. The Razer Turbos are in a solid pin. So it's not a roll pin actually because it's not rolled. Anyways, here's our spring. We'll be reusing that. Now, I think this just lifts out of there. Oh wow, yeah. I've been told that um, the Razer Turbos have a, a metal sprag carrier in them from the factory. And mine does, it, everything looks okay on it. I'm just noticing. It's not plastic like in the old Razers. There we go, it just had a bit of suction on there from the oil, the fluid. This is the hub that the axle rides in. I don't know if you can hear that. So this bearing is a little noisy. It's not bad though. It's actually much better shape than I expected it to be. So we'll set that aside. Now I think this other side should lift right out too. I'm gonna try and pull the sprag out and hopefully it doesn't fall apart. Oh, it's going to. There's little springs in there. I'm going to have to reuse all those components anyways into my new sprag carrier. So at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter whether uh, it falls apart because I'll be taking it apart. Okay, so let's pull that sprag carrier out. There's springs and rollers in there. Looks like there's a little nick or two from where the armature plate engages with the sprag. There's some some deformities there. The main benefit of the um, new sprag carrier is that it's set up for a, a 12 tooth armature plate, not a six, which is why I have to replace it while I'm in here. So I'm going to reuse all those springs. They still should be good. 
In hindsight, I probably should have gotten new ones, but I don't think it'll be an issue. And then all these rollers are just fine. There's no damage with those. So just collect all those, set them aside for when we go to put back together our new one. So I wasn't originally gonna make a video on this, but I posted some pictures on Instagram and you guys are like, yeah, show us a video how to rebuild a front diff. So here it is. It's just gonna be a basic one. Just follow along. It's actually, sounds daunting, but it's really not that difficult of a, of a job. So I'm gonna remove the ring gear now. That's our main gear, Let's inspect it for any damage. And there is none, heck yeah. This is exactly what I wanna see. There's no wear, there's no damage on that section of the diff at all. So we'll inspect the rest in a minute. So far so good. So you see that's where all the fluid's pooling. I'm gonna dump out that fluid in a second so I don't make a mess. Here's our main output shaft. I don't see any damage on it either. This is excellent. That's that loud bearing I've been hearing though. That's definitely the noisy bearing of the output shaft. There's a touch of play in it. And I'm assuming that play is kind of what's caused that seal to eventually fail. That with a mix of heat probably. So I'll dump that. Oh, I gotta pull that off first so I don't lose it in my in my oil. Just making sure there's no other random pieces in there. Okay, so don't let this fall into wherever you're dumping, if you're dumping into a big oil jug. So I'm going to hold that and I'm going to go quickly just dump that. Okay, so I've dumped the oil. Everything's looking great in here. We can pull out the other hub. Just jiggle it and it'll come out right out of the seal there. See if you would have pulled that out before you drained the oil, it would have dumped all out. So they're slightly different, so remember that. Let's see what this one sounds like. It's not too bad. It doesn't spin as nice as the other one. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna go clean it all out, wipe it down. We can flip it over and get rid of the rest of the oil there. Good time to inspect your output gear. Just take a look at all the surfaces. Well, you can see this thing's being used because it's glazed really nice. It's uh, really polished and shiny. No serious pitting, no visible cracks, nicks, no damage. This diff's looking real healthy. I'm really glad that there's no damage to this. Really happy with what I'm finding. I'm just gonna get the rest of this oil out of there. Okay. So the next step, once we have all this disassembled is, we're gonna have to get the output shaft out. So in order to do that, we're gonna have to remove the seal over there. These bearings need to be pressed off of these hubs using a press. So I'm gonna take this I'm going to flip it over. Here you can see the seal. This was my culprit, leaky seal. We need to remove that seal. And depending on how you like to do that, there's a few methods. But the easiest one I find is to just drill a hole or two in this seal. And then you can pry it out. Some people like to put some self-tapping screws in there and then pry it out with like the nail remover on a hammer or a pry bar or something, really doesn't matter. You gotta get it out. Doesn't matter if you destroy the seal because you're not reusing it, you're putting a new one in. I'm putting SKF seals in and SKF bearings from Sandcraft RCR, much higher quality components. 
than what comes in these stock. Hear that? That's my diff noise. That bearing's had better days. That's what I'm hearing when I'm ripping down the trail. And boy, is it annoying. It keeps making me think my front diff's gonna explode. Let's drain out the rest of that oil. All right, so. Let's get that seal out. I'm gonna set that aside for a sec. Before we dig into the seal, let's address this. Here we have all the electromagnet component of the diff. You'll see this plastic piece, I'm replacing it with an aluminum piece from Sandcraft RCR. Nice billet piece going to be stronger and the armature plate is also being replaced with the Sandcraft RCR component so here we have our six tooth armature plate and it's going to be replaced with the 12 tooth much different design. You can see a lot more meat to that one. Just like that. Out with the old, in with the new. So this stuff's still good. So I'm not gonna throw it out or anything, I'm gonna keep it. But you can see, billet aluminum versus uh, plastic, yeah, evidently better. So we're gonna take this now, we're just gonna set it aside because these seals need to come out. I didn't have any leakage on these seals, but might as well replace them. Whenever you're removing a seal, you wanna make sure whatever you do, you don't score that seal mating surface on this aluminum. It's easy to scratch, especially if you're using like a hard pick or something. Here are our new SKF seals from Sandcraft RCR. Just gonna, you see I've got the metal ring, the tensioning ring out of the old seal. It's actually still pretty decent. I'm just gonna push this seal through by smacking it all around there. Be careful not to score it or anything. Boom. That old seal's out. Like I said, it still actually looks pretty decent. These ones weren't leaking, but I'm not gonna take the diff apart and not replace these seals. You probably would never wanna reuse something like this, but I'm gonna set these aside, just cause. And then you're gonna wanna clean up your mating surfaces here so that the new seal has a nice clean place to sit but you don't want to use any sandpaper or abrasives. You can lightly rub it sometimes with like a, a scotch pad very lightly, but I suggest if you don't need to, then don't. You don't want to take any material off there. You want that seal to be as tight as possible so that it seals. So just clean it all off. You can use a little bit of some sort of a, a cleaner or a paint thinner even or something. And then um, you're good to put the new one in. I'm just going to use a little bit of WD-40. If 
If you do feel you need to kind of run something across there to clean it up, then I'm just using a plastic covered um, razor blade. Make sure you use something softer than the material really, just something plastic. Just in case you feel there might be some debris on there. Don't want to score that new seal putting it on. That looks pretty clean to me. I'm just going around and wiping the main case seal down. It's a thick rubber seal. Just so it's got a clean mating surface once I bolt this all back together. Okay, that's all clean. We can put our new seal in now. The new SKF seals have these cool, I don't know if you can see them. There are these ridges in here, sealing ridges that compress and kind of squeeze in there. And since they're ridged, they actually make multiple sealing surfaces. They're raised rather than just one. They're a really nice seal. SKF makes a lot of military grade sh stuff and uh, yeah, they just, they're just like high quality components. They make some of the best bearings, a lot of turbines, stuff like that, and power plants. Uh, hydroelectric turbines, stuff like that will run SKF bearings. These guys have bearings so big you can like walk inside of them. They're the leaders. So just get it started nice and even. You should be able to really push this thing in with your fingers until it's flush on the outside like the old one was. Oops. Make sure you get it started even and start getting it in there evenly. And just go around and press it in with your fingers. Just make sure it's evenly flush all the way around. This one looks good. Piece of cake, that was easy. Inspect the other side, everything looks good. Gap around the edge, that border looks even. That seal's ready for action. So this cover plate is pretty much done now. Got our new seal in. Everything's clean on the inside. That baby's ready to go now. We'll set that aside. Okay, with that done, we can now address the other side of the case. One extra step on this one, because we have to remove the seal here, as we discussed earlier, for the output shaft. The loud, noisy bearing. This is the bearing that takes a predominant amount of the stress in this application. All the shock load from the drivetrain goes through this bearing. There is a retaining clip under there. So I'm just gonna drill a little hole in this seal here. side here. Now I'm gonna put I'm gonna put a screw in there. There we go. Redneck ingenuity, piece of cake. 
Now we have access to our bearing here, which is really noisy and feels kind of chunky. And our retaining clip to get this all apart. Here, you see what I've done? Basically just use these as leverage points to pop that seal out. Okay, so now the last step is to get that, see that retaining ring there? That's holding all that together. So we'll pull that out. Grab a set of snap ring pliers. And we're gonna walk this off of there without over stretching it. Because we're reusing that. Ooh, you should probably wear safety glasses. Snap rings off, set that aside. And now there's the big retaining clip in here. And this is the main one that actually holds it all together. I just find it's easier to get that other snap ring off first. So the other one you spread open, this one you close up to get it out. guys out set him aside now we should be able to push this out it's gonna wipe the debris out of there so it doesn't jam up. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly change the battery in the camera so it doesn't die on me. We'll be right back. Okay, so obviously it would have been too easy if everything just came apart, right? Because that never, that can never happen. Things can never go apart like they're supposed to because, well, that would make you want to work on your machine. So, according to the video I saw on Sandcraft's site, this is supposed to just once you take the retainer clips out like we did, this is supposed to just slide right out this bearing. But in there, there seems to be like a little bit of a, I don't know if it's damaged or when they were putting it in in the factory, there's a little bit of like a, a lip almost, like a rough section. I'm gonna see if I can show you. Probably won't be able to see it, but I'll try. You might be able to see there, probably not. There's a few nicks. And I think they're stopping. GoPros don't like to, they don't like to focus very close. There's a few nicks there. And I think it's just enough to grab the bearing from sliding out. So I don't really want to, I don't want to run too much sandpaper and they're at risk of damaging the seal surface. Here, I don't want to throw the tolerances off. I tried smacking it once or twice with a rubber mallet. I've got a punch through the hole here in the output shaft. It's being held by the vise here so I can smack it. I just, uh, I don't know. 
too, I don't really want to, I hit it a few times on the edge here and it's cast aluminum and I can already see it starting to deform a bit. I don't want to mess with it. Comes out that much and then it hits the retaining ring, ring lip and uh, it stops. We'll try pulling on it a few more times. You can see it's getting bound up on something. It shouldn't be that hard. It should slide right out. I can feel there's a little bit of a lip there. Actually, maybe it's a better idea if I were to just grab a bit of a file and see if I can get that lip off. So I'm going to see if I can file off that lip. Got some needle files here. This round one's probably going to be the best to get in there without damaging anything around it. I don't want to be doing this really more than I need to be. There's definitely a lip there though. I'm just filing in the channel where the retaining clip sits and I'm being very careful not to touch the seal mating surface there. Let's see a few more raised ridges here. Don't ever force stuff like this. Always be careful, think about it. Take a look at it. Examine what's going on before you start smacking stuff and forcing it because this is just aluminum and it's really sensitive material, especially being cast. And you gotta remember, we're press fitting things in here so we can't, we can't warp anything. These tolerances are important. It'll lube in there. You can hear it's hitting something. Wow, uh, bearing's really loud now. There's probably chunks of metal filing in there. Resist the urge to pry off the case and try to push that out because um, that's kind of a recipe for disaster probably. Okay, so I've sanded as much as I want to. We'll see if we can give it a smack out. Oh, 
Oh, nice. We're making progress. Look at that. That's all it was, guys. You can see here now that it's almost out. So it's definitely just a little bit of a burr from either the um, 4,000 miles on here. So maybe that bearing had a little bit of shutter or play in it over time. And maybe that hardened retaining clip kind of caused a little bit of a, a lip to happen there. Come on. I know you wanna. There we go. Hope the new one's not too hard to get in. Finally, we got her. So oftentimes jobs like this are more about brains than brawn. You can only wreck it once and this is a really, really expensive piece to wreck. So here's our culprit. That definitely does not sound right. There might be a little debris in there now, but it was already noisy, but now you can really hear it out of the housing. That bearing is done. So yeah, that's good to know. This seems to be the main culprit where we'll replace that with a nice SKF bearing. That's out. I think that should be the hardest part. I got to clean out this case now because I got a bunch of dirt in it, manhandling it. And then I'm going to just, the lip was on the top part here. Before the, before the retainer cut out, there was a little lip there I sanded off. I'm going to give it a little bit more of a sand. I'm assuming that removing that bearing has smoothed it all out now. And I'll just clean up that mating surface, make sure nothing's damaged. 
and um, get ready to put the new new unit back together. The last thing we need to do to disassemble this stuff is we're gonna have to press the bearing off of here and we'll have to press the bearings off of the hubs too. So we'll do that on the press. So I'm just gonna get this guy all cleaned up. But actually before we do that, we can uh, push out this seal just like we did on the other side. So I just like to clean the edge here a bit. And then we'll push it through just like we did on the last one. Being super careful not to, um, not to scar any of the aluminum around there. Boom, piece of cake. That flew right out. We'll clean that mating surface up too. Old seals out. We'll clean it all. And um, I'll put in the bearing here and then I'll do the new seal in there. It's just like the other one. We're just gonna press it in by finger. So yeah, I'm gonna clean this up and we'll move on. So here are the new SKF bearings. I'm already seeing a little bit of a difference. They've got a much larger shoulder. Let me open this up. Oh, they're even wrapped up like candy. Mm -mm. Candy for the razor. Oh wow, that's nice. Ooh, they feel good. <laughs> they better. Um, so it's got a bigger, a bigger shoulder, I'd say, on the inside for sure, in comparison to the other ones. You can see how much larger that shoulder is compared to that. So it is a slightly different design. They're more square. These ones are more tapered off. Besides that, the looks are similar. SKF Explorer. Cool. Versus no name. So I'll open that other guy up once I get there. Ooh, nice and greasy or oily should I say why is it making any noise what the heck it's, it's not the same one it's, it's not making the same song um, wow this one looks quite a bit different um, well not really this one seems to have like a narrower shoulder almost but it's got like a, a step a taper to it whereas this one didn't have that taper on the on the inside there These are the SKF Explorer as well. Made in USA. Nice. That's what I like to see. America. America. American made goods. Yeah, definitely way better quality just, just looking at it. Um, but the true test is going to come in installing it and using it. It's like butter. So, yeah. This is the replacement for the output shaft. This was my major problem. Uh, and the major reason I took apart the diff is because this bearing was noisy and worn out on my machine. So we will replace it with this guy. We'll go press it in. So let's head outside to the shop, the, the tent shed, and uh, we'll press those babies in. All right, we got the press in here. I've had this shelter logic tent shed thing for like three years now this is third or fourth winter got this thing for three hundred dollars or like 225 american what a deal got the press in here and a bunch of other crap i don't use all the time all right let's press these bearings off here we'll start off by pressing out the um output bearing
that one's out. Now we can go ahead and push the new one in. I'm just gonna go get some sockets so I can use to press that on. Okay, that guy's on there. Make sure it's seated and it is. Listen to that. You can't hear anything. That's what it should make. Or that's how it should sound, I mean. Okay, now we'll do the other two. is out. Get the new one in. guys in and then we'll just repeat this one more time for the other side okay so we got the bearings all pressed on the new ones nice like that they all look and feel good listen to the difference in the output bearing so if there was any doubt before that that bearing was worn. You can definitely hear it now, or not hear it, which is what we were going for. So that bearing's a lot better now, and uh, that problem is solved. So now we just have to reassemble this differential assembly with all of the new Sandcraft RCR components. I've taken apart my spray carrier, the OEM one, you guys saw earlier that all those rollers had fallen out when I pulled the old sprag out. Inside this spray carrier, there is a bunch of what they call springs. I'm just using a pick. I don't want to spread these open too much. I just want to enough to get it off. Whoop, watch out, don't lose them. They like to launch off sometimes. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to take all those off. The 
That's all they are. They're these little springs. And they hold the rollers in place. So just go around and pop all these out because you have to reuse them for your new sprag carrier. Because the Sandcraft RCR sprag carrier, I, uh, realistically, it's, it's the same thing here. This is a billet carrier from the factory. This is a billet carrier from Sandcraft or um, a sprag carrier or a sprag, whatever you want to call it. I don't know, or sprag or sprog or whatever. I've heard it called a million things. I'm calling it a sprag because I'm Canadian, eh? And that's what it sounds like it's spelt like. Um, but some people have called it a sprog carrier or something. But the big difference is here. Just like on the armature plate, the sprag carrier has six notches cut out of it here. Whereas my new armature plate has 12 notches, so the carrier needs 12 cutouts. That's basically the uh, only real noticeable difference between the two pieces. Size-wise, they're identical. Obviously, they have to be. And uh, this one from Sandcraft RCR also has like a, a stepped lip here, whereas the one from Polaris is just flat. So, yeah. I'm gonna, I've already started, I already put a few in here just to see if everything fits, the springs. So as you can see, it comes with no springs. You could order new ones if you wanted to. In hindsight, I would have ordered new ones, but really I don't think it matters. So just go around and pull all these out. When you're pulling these out, make sure none of them are damaged. If they are damaged, do not reuse it. Make sure you get a new one because you don't want this diff failing on you over something this silly. Okay, with all those out, we can now transfer them into the new carrier. And they just press in. Get them lined up, make sure they snap into that groove there. Once I said, like I said before, you don't want to stretch them too much. You don't want to over bend them or anything so that they don't get damaged. They need to maintain this tension. A little finicky. So a bit of a disclaimer while I'm working on this. Um, Sandcraft RCR did not send me these components. They didn't give me a deal on them or anything like that. I paid retail price for these components. Um, it's been something I've wanted to do for a while. Quite honestly, I didn't even reach out to them. Um, I just, I wanted to buy these. I wanted to give them a good test myself. There's no strings attached. If they work good, I'm gonna tell you it works good. If it works like crap, I'm going to tell you it works like crap. Um, I have no doubt that it's going to work good. I'm pretty confident. I've heard good things about all of Sandcraft RCR's components, quite honestly. Um, so that's why I spent the big bucks and, and went with their kit. Because it's got a good track record. So um, I'm really interested to see how this diff performs and holds up in the long run now with all these upgraded components. The spray carriers in previous model razors and specifically non-turbo units are generally plastic. It is a big failure point on these diffs. If you're going in there to change anything, make sure you upgrade your sprag too. So now reassembly is identical to disassembly, just the opposite. So we're gonna slide this bearing in here. Hopefully it slides right in. Might need a few taps to get it in there. Before I tap on it, I'm gonna put the C-clip on, the retainer clip, so that bearing doesn't shift somehow. I doubt it would, but just in case.
that clicked into place. Whenever you're hammering in or pressing in any sort of a bearing or a seal, you want to make sure it's going in there evenly, not lopsided. You can damage the press fit or the seal or the bearing by not getting it in there straight. Also, when you are applying pressure or smacking on any sort of a bearing, you want to make sure that all that force is applied to the outer race, not the inner race. You want to be pushing it in from the outside border so that as not to damage the bearing assembly itself and put stress in locations that it's not designed to handle it. As you can see, I'm not really smacking on that very hard. I'm just kind of guiding it in there. It's a very loose press fit. There we go. Dropped right in there. Nice. Everything feels good. Now we can put the retaining clip in. That guy's in there. Now that bearing is not going anywhere. Make sure it's in the groove. Good, it is. That bearing's nice and tight, no more slide up and down. Get a little bit of Justice Brothers gear oil treatment in that bearing. For its initial kind of break in. So that difference quiets it down right away when it's lubricated. Rubbing a little bit around the shaft there. And then we can put our seal on. Make sure your mating surface is clean. Mine is. You saw I lubed the shaft seal surface just so that seal can slide on there nicely. I don't lube the outside though. Pop that over. And we'll press that seal in just like we did the other one with our fingers. evenly all around. If you don't have the finger strength to push it in or if it's a little tight, then you can always tap it in very gently. What? Who's bothering me? It's a tight fit, that's nice. That's sealed in there pretty good. Okay. You can feel that's a new seal because it's tight on the shaft there. Won't let it free spin. That's good. It'll break in nicely, provide a really good seal. Everything looks good there. Now we can go ahead and put 
our last seal in. Give the sealing surface a wipe. Just like the other two seals, we're gonna push this guy in with her fingers, get it started even. And then just go ahead, whoops. There we go. That is in there, nice. Flush all around. Check the other side. Looks flush. Looks evenly pushed in there. Okay. So the seals are replaced. The output shaft is back in, secured. And the bearing is fresh. Now we can go ahead and reassemble the rest of the um, differential assembly here. Got to change my SD card, and I'll be right back. All right, so with all the seals in place, the output bearing and seal in place, the retaining clips in there, we are on to putting the rollers into the sprag and getting our hubs in, our output hubs. So I'm going to start off by putting the output hubs into the housing. So we'll get our hub here. I'm going to spread a tiny bit of assembly lube on there just so I don't nick the seal getting it over that. And I'm also going to give a little bit of lube to the bearing here. And work that in there. Okay. Now we'll just drop that guy in there. So just to show you, he's going to slide in to that seal there. Presses in there nicely. Sure, we don't damage that seal. Boom. There we go. Now it's also a good time to check if that seal is in far enough. This one looks like it could be pressed in a little more to make better contact. So I'm going to push this seal in just a touch more. I've heard some people say in the past that the seal mating surface, where the seal mates to the metal component, will actually wear down the metal a little bit. And they say that if you can, you should position the new seal in a slightly, slightly different spot than the old one so that there's a like, virgin mounting surface. I don't know how true that is or... You also have to be careful because sometimes if you put it in a place that's like further out in that area of the shaft has been exposed to the elements, it might be abrasive and rough and it might actually break that seal down faster. So also keep that in mind. I'm just seeing how even that seal is, this section needs to go in a little more. I want to get it identical everywhere. A little more here. To 
just finessing it in there bit by bit so that it's flush and even all around. That looks pretty good. Let's try it again. There we go. That is mint, perfect. So that's in there. Okay, that is on there. Now the next step is we can get that ring gear in place. But before we do the ring gear, we need to do our last bit of the Sandcraft modification, which is putting our 300M roll pin in there. We're gonna smack our tapered 300M roll pin into that little hole. I'm gonna take that plastic ring off there. The washer. I'm gonna put it on there. Here we have the Sandcraft RCR 300M heat treated hardened roll pin in comparison to the stock roll pin which is just like way smaller and it has like a textured finish on it the stock one the sandcraft rcr pin is tapered the stock one isn't we just place it into the hole in the ring gear when I was taking this apart, the other one literally just fell out. So if you lose that when you're driving, it's not good, or if it breaks. So we got that position. We're going to smack it into place. The hollow roll pins and the stock uh, dowel pins in general are a large failure point on these machines. So if you're ever in here, make sure you upgrade yours. That's in there nicely. I'll give it one more tap. Perfect, that ain't going nowhere. Now we can place the ring gear in. I've already wiped it down pretty much. All I need to. No debris in the case. All right, that spins, everything's okay. With that in, the next step is gonna be getting our sprag in there. So in order to do that, now we gotta install all these rollers, which can be a little annoying um, because they don't like clip in and stay in place. They have to free float, right? So they're supposed to free float on the springs and the spring pops it in and out. And then it bottoms out on the carrier cage. Um, so like once you put all these in, when they come assembled from other companies or when you buy a new one from Polaris, it comes all put together in this like plastic sleeve or sheath. It almost looks like a piston ring compressor. It has them all compressed so you can slide it in and then like lift up the tube. I don't have one of those, so I'm just gonna, I'm gonna be a little ghetto. And I thought I would do this. I've got long hair, so I've got hair elastics handy. I'm gonna take a hair elastic, put it around here, and I'm gonna use that to hold these in place. So I'm gonna go around, and I'm gonna put all these rollers in there, and the hair elastic is gonna secure them into place. And when I go to put it in, I'll just roll the elastic up, and it should work nicely. So just a little hack there. You don't need anything fancy. Oh, there's still hair on that one. <laughs> so you can use an elastic band. I just figured the hair elastic's a little tougher. Then when I'm done, I can put it back in my hair. <laughs> so just go around and do all these guys. If you like the video, make sure you leave me a thumbs up. 
check out the riding content where we abuse these machines and abuse all these components I'm installing. Everyone knows, uh, or anyone that watches the videos regularly knows that I'm really into proactive and preventative maintenance. I'm really into maintaining my machines very well. I'm like my machine to be 110% whenever I'm out so that I know I can full send it. That's why I do all my work on my own. Um, the only time my machine sees a dealership is if it's a warranty related issue. And then me being me, I still go over it with a fine tooth comb when I get home because I just don't trust anyone. My safety and the safety of my passengers relies upon a well-assembled, well-functioning machine. So I wouldn't be able to live with myself if something silly happened and I hadn't checked it. So that's pretty much in place. Go around and do the same for the other side. Another hair elastic. It's funny because the hair elastic actually like pops right in the middle groove there. It works perfect. Should start selling these Sprague Carrier Assembly Elastics. $19.99 for two. But if you order now, for three easy payments of $4.99 and shipping, you can have two of these elastics at your door. But yeah, like I said, subscribe to the channel, guys. Hit that thumbs up button. Check out all the riding content. Leave us a comment. Follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. Check out some of our supporters. Check out the Sandcraft website if you want more info on this product, Sandcraft RCR. And uh, yeah, check out all our other channel supporters and sponsors that have been with us for uh, quite some time. We've got a few new ones, and we've, had a, we've got a few that we've had on board for quite a while. Uh, if you're a new viewer, then I'm inviting you to stay along, check out some of the ride content, subscribe, hit that notification button so you don't miss any of the uploads. And if you're... Um, if you're uh, already a subscriber or a long-term viewer, then thanks for the support, guys. I appreciate it. Um, oh, there I am missing one. Last one here. Get these positioned. So we got all our rollers being held in with the hair elastic and the sprag. I'm just going to go around and push them down as much as I can. Okay, and now we can insert this like that. Perfect. So as we push down, the elastic will roll up itself. Some of you guys might be noticing that I'm putting that spray carrier in upside down here by accident. Got a little caught up chatting and paying attention to other things. I will correct that in a moment. Boom. Get the elastics out of there. You don't need those in your diff. They're not going to make it any better. <laughs> so yeah, that went really well. Without an elastic or, or some assistance here, that's a real pain. Because you keep trying to get it in, but they keep falling out. Rotate it a few times. Everything seems fine. No binding. Perfect. Now we can go ahead and we can double check if we haven't forgotten anything. Nope. Nope, I think we got everything. Now we can go ahead and put our last hub piece in there. It slides right in. Give it a little bit of lube lube. Give it a little lube around the collar here. So it slides into the seal nicely. Rotate it, distribute some of that assembly lubricant. Now we have our spring. Wipe that down.
So I forgot to mention earlier, I accidentally slipped my spray carrier in the wrong way. Obviously you need to slip it in so that the notches for the armature plate are facing up towards the armature plate, not down. I also forgot to mention that you should put some assembly lube on all those sliders in the spray carrier before you pop it all in. So if for some reason you weren't removing or for some reason you're just doing the um, the bearings and the seals and you don't need to um, remove the balls on the spray carrier, you can also save them from falling out by pushing it up a little bit and then putting your elastic on, spray, sliding the spray up more, and then just getting that elastic on there before those things pop out and go everywhere. So we're gonna slide it up some more. There we go. Make sure your dowel pin is in all the way until it hits like that, um, that step or the ridge. We'll slide the ring gear on here. Make sure it rotates. We'll get our spring. Okay, so there's like no instructions on this part on the Sandcraft website, and there's no good videos of it. So I'm really glad that I'm making this video because this was annoying. I just had to guess, and um, the thing is, running this 12 tooth uh, armature is a little different than uh, the OEM six tooth. And the OEM plastic piece is a little bit different than the Sandcraft aluminum retaining ring. So I finally figured it out. On the video, they do a terrible job showing exactly how this section goes together. So you can't really see where they're putting this pin or how this spring is positioned, which way is going where. So pay attention the top of the spring curves over this way the bottom goes that way just pay attention to how this is looking see there's a pin there I tried putting the pin on each side of here I couldn't get the teeth lined up on here I've spent like an hour messing with it at first I couldn't get the pin in the middle but now I've Notice that it does go in the middle. It goes in between those two pieces of spring. So, get your pin position. You might have to 
move the spring around a little bit for it to sit flush. Once that's positioned, your armature plate should fall into place. Make sure it's like that, because if it's not, the diff's not gonna work and it's not gonna come to get, go together like it's supposed to. You're gonna find out when you put it in your machine and then you have to pull it right back out. Okay, so that took a little longer than it's supposed to. And these are those little stupid things that usually end up eating all your time. And you're pretty much done. Now we can pour some more lube everywhere. Because there's never enough lube. Okay. So just double check you got everything. We do. Now we can put our cover back on. The last step is you can add your diff fluid. The guys at Sandcraft RCR recommended running like a thicker differential fluid rather than the Polaris Demand Drive. I'm just gonna keep running the Polaris Demand Drive like I have been. It served me well so far. I know a lot of them say it's uh, too thin, but I'll be riding in colder weather now, so the thinner fluid will probably be better. I don't really want to run something as thick as a 75W90. Um, I'm gonna have to do a bit more research. Maybe you guys can tell me what you're running in your diffs for fluid. But for now, I'll pour in the recommended 250 mils of the demand drive from Polaris. That's right, 250 mils. That's all this diff takes. Hard to believe that's all that's lubricating it, but it is. I don't have a good measure here, so I'm just gonna use these med cups. 10 of these. Two hundred fifty mils right there. So now we can finally put the cover on and bolt it all together and hopefully everything fits well. Oh yeah, there we go. I hope this video helped you guys out. It's far from perfect. Um, it's my first time rebuilding one of these diffs. I've done other diffs in the past. This is probably easiest front diff assembly I've ever had to take apart and rebuild. There's nothing to it. And now after this little lesson here and having this apart and kind of really getting to know it and problem solving those areas there I was just mentioning, um, I really feel like I know these things well. So um, I'm pretty, pretty satisfied with that. It was a good learning curve, um, learned a lot there. So if it was helpful for you, make sure you leave a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can check out more cool content. Most importantly, if you think something's done wrong or if you have tips and tricks or if you've got experiences with product upgrades, modifications that you've done in the past, whether they're good or bad, make sure you leave a comment. Because um, a lot of people, when they watch these types of videos, actually, sometimes I, I know when I'm watching videos like this, I'm, I'm hunting the comments while I'm watching because um, that's where you find a lot of good supplemental info. So leave the info down there, guys. Um, it's a lot more educational and a lot more helpful of a video when you leave the comments down below and people engage in conversation, then we can really get down to business and um, cover all the bases. So even if I miss something in the video, we can touch on it in the comments. I'll be checking the comments. Uh, I always check the comments. A lot of you guys that leave comments know that I'm pretty good at responding back to almost everything. So um, yeah, get engaged down there. Make sure you hit that notification button too so you don't miss future uploads. I'm thinking about 
doing more videos like this. Uh, I'm gonna do like this Tech Talk Tuesday thing. This might be the first or second episode of that actually, so I'm not sure um, how this all worked out because I'm guessing into the future, but I would like to do a Tech Talk Tuesday type of video series where I discuss various things like this and other technical mechanical aspects of the ownership of these types of vehicles and what goes into keeping them maintained and running reliably. I hear a lot of hate on the Polaris Razor and on the Can-Ams about all oh, those machines are so unreliable or like, oh, what a piece of crap. I took it out a few times and, and it fell apart on me or it's like, you know what? It all comes down to maintenance. You want to ride hard. You got to maintain hard. You can't just park it wet and then beat the crap out of it all the time and not ever do anything. Most of the damage you see that's serious is caused by collateral from lack of maintenance, guys. I've had this machine for about 4,000 miles now. I've ridden it pretty hard. I'm not saying I'm the hardest rider out there, but you guys know how we ride. And I mean, aside from like the rock bouncers and the guys that are hill killing, I mean, we ride pretty aggressively. So um, this front diff's held together. My machine's held together. I haven't had any serious warranty claims at all. Yeah, I've replaced a bunch of stuff, but wear and tear, guys. You replace a bunch of stuff on your, on your wife's minivan, too. And uh, she's not always racing. Well, I don't know. I've seen some of those women drive, or men drive, too. I've seen those minivans, man. Sent land speed records. Especially when it's snowing. <laughs> Passing you in the left lane. You know, those eight kids in the back add a lot of traction. <laughs> But uh, yeah, long story short, if you want to beat on these things, you really do have to maintain them well. Um, so with that being said, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Get out there on a ride. And when you are riding out there, stay safe. Make sure you take good care of that machine so you can send it whenever you're out there. So yeah, I'm snugging these up. You don't want to over torque these because they're going into cast aluminum, obviously. I'm not really reefing on these. I'm just making sure they're all snugged up so I don't have any leaks. Everything seems good. Everything's rotating. Woo! What I like to do now is I've already laid it on that side. I know that seal's not leaking. Lay it on the other side. Make sure that seal's not leaking. Let it lay like this for a bit. I don't think that back seal is leaking either. I'll lay it down. I'll make sure everything's good. Make sure uh, you don't flip it upside down though because it'll start draining out your vent line. And when you're handling it, make sure you're not flipping it upside down or you're gonna start draining fluid out the vent. So you guys saw me, I was putting some Justice Brothers gear oil treatment in there, using it as an assembly lube, as well as I added about a third of a bottle to the diff just to thicken that oil up just a little bit. Also, I mentioned earlier that I had a crack in one of these wires here. I can see the wire. Uh, the plastic has cracked off it, and I can see the black one starting to crack too, just from being handled. So I'm going to coat those both in some um, liquid. Li li uh, sorry, let me try that again. So I'm going to coat both of those in um, li liquid electrical tape just to seal them up. Okay, I got that all coated in liquid electrical tape. My tape's kind of gotten thick. I find once you open these, uh, you get like three or four weeks to use it up, and then no matter how tight you tighten it up, they end up drying up once they're exposed to oxygen. But when this stuff is fresh, even now it's gonna it's gonna go on there and it's gonna gum up and dry up real nice. It'll work well. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one.